Hello, Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another special edition of the show. I'm here with Jeff Owens at Odette Winery. Um, this is uh, pretty darn cool, let's put it that way. Just just being at a winery like this, so young and and kind of cutting edge maybe? Hopefully yeah, cutting, cutting edge. edge, yeah. And um, this was definitely suggested by, uh, by somebody, um, uh, someone I work with, and um, so we're, we're here to taste some great wines um, and check out the winery. And Jeff, why don't you tell us who you are and how you got here and all that. Sure thing. So my name is Jeff Owens. I'm the winemaker here at Odette Estate. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a small uh, producer here in the Stag's Leap, uh, the heart of the Stag's Leap AVA in Napa right. Valley. Uh, really just focusing on estate grown Cabernet Sauvignon uh, and Bordeaux varietals to kind of round that out. So we have 45 acres here on the estate, um, just trying to produce the best, best possible wine that we can make here. Cool. That's really the goal. Cool. So how'd you get into winemaking? Uh, it actually was not until I was in college and I had a different major already. Okay. And uh, one of my roommates. I understand that too. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I mean, it worked out at the end, obviously. Right. Uh, I had a roommate that was minoring in viticulture. All right. And uh, that kind of opened my idea, uh, my, my mind to the idea of uh, uh, actually being in wine, which I thought was pretty cool. Okay. So I took a class the next quarter and I was immediately hooked. I was like, this is so awesome. I could definitely do this for us. Right. What was this at UC Davis? Uh, this was at Cal Poly. Cal Poly. Actually, okay, cool. Right. All right. Breaking the mold. There you go. <laughs> yeah, because like everybody, everybody went to UC Davis, you know. That's so right. lots of Davis. Davis was great too. Cool. Um, and then, uh, so when you got out of college, is so what did you do after that? You obviously weren't had an internship. You didn't become head winemaker, right? <laughs> no, no, yeah, it took some time for sure. Uh, I had an internship at a local winery here in Napa Valley to complete my degree. Okay. And then I started working for Plum Track in the cellar at okay. the bottom, right? Bottom of the totem pole, mm -hmm. uh, cellar worker, and uh, just continued to work my way on up. Cool. So cellar worker, enologist, assistant winemaker for Plum Jack, assistant winemaker for Cade. All right. And then winemaker here in 2012. Nice. Percentage. And Plum Jack and Cade are part of the same group as Odette, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. All sister properties. Cool. Focusing on the different uh, ABAs, all the state ones. All right. And that's where I'll be next. So the next week's show will be Plum Jack, and not, not Cade, but Plum Jack. So this is going to be really cool to be able to kind of work with two wineries under the same umbrella, um, especially the same day too. So that's that's gonna be really exciting for me. I've actually also, not that I, I haven't ever had, I've never had these and I haven't actually had the, the Plump Jack wines ever. Now, um, we don't mention where I work, just so I had to get that out of the way because that actually got mentioned on one of them. But um, for work, you know, I do mention I do work. I don't just do this for a living. Um, I did have the uh, Cade wine, so they were really good. Um, but anyway, um, so this is going to be exciting for me because these are going to be wines that I haven't had and I think most of the people pretty much out there haven't had unless they've come to the winery, right? They have not had them yet, I guarantee <laughs> Yeah. Especially Yodek considering it's not released yet. So. Yeah. So this is why this is cutting, bleeding edge. This is wine that hasn't been out there. I'm, I'm lucky enough to be one of the first non-employees to, to really try this. So Exactly. One of the first ever. <laughs> nice. Good day, for sure. So this is this has been a great trip. So um, uh, so you were you went to Plum Jack, went to Cade, came here. So t talk to me about Odette and and the property and and how how that came about. Sure. Um, so we weren't actually looking to acquire anything else. Okay. This property just kind of just fell into our laps, um, which is a great opportunity. There's not that many times where property in Stag's Leap comes available for purchase. Okay. Um, so that's pretty special as well. Um, this is actually the second vineyard planted in the Stag's Leap AVA, All right. behind the famous Nathan Fay uh, vineyard, okay. who's kind of the pioneer down here. Um, and it's just, it hasn't changed hands for the past 40 plus years, so wow. it's a great opportunity. Um, really unique to be able to come in here and, and kind of create something new and fresh, and, uh, and a new vision to go along with that as right. well. Yeah. So when we were walking through the vineyards, by the way, uh, I took a picture of, of the clone. I mean, it's granted it was a one-year-old plant, but of the clone 337. So um, that was cool. I got to see the actual clone that, that 
the name of this website was derived from. You know, again, 337 Wine, do not sue me, okay? <laughs> Which I don't think you can anyway because my, my brand is enough different that they can't really claim anything. But um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, which see, I should have actually come, come to them and do an interview with them, but I just, anyway, I just didn't do it. So, um, but uh, uh, that was really cool to be able to see that clone um, that you're growing here. Um, it's and brand you, new, yeah, just planted. Yeah, so, and so that's what you're doing, your work, you, you've got, you inherited vineyards, and then right. you're also going to be uh, replanting, Doing right? a lot of replanting, right. So to, we acquired the property in February of 2012, mm -hmm. and we wanted to go through one vintage of not touching anything, just to right. see what kind of quality we had, to see what we were working with, and to really not make anything that was uh, too drastic out the gate. Right. Just take our time. Everything is about a 30-year uh, approach and vision, mm -hmm. rather than a one, two, three, five year. I mean, we're doing this right. for the long, uh, the long haul. Uh, okay. We're not going anywhere, so. Right, yeah. <laughs> want to make sure that what we do, we do right. Um, so it's all about, you know, analyzing the property, seeing what uh, was going to be the best clones and varietals uh, matching for making the blends going forward, uh, making sure that we get all clean uh, plant material as well, which is mm -hmm. super important. All right. Um, and so we just took 2012 to analyze and, and then in 2013 started to rip out some different blocks and, and uh, get some new stuff going. Okay. So from, from the 2012 vintage, um, so you... you I'm, just, I'm guessing you prioritized what areas you wanted to hit first. Um, are there some areas you p are pretty much not going to touch, or is it? Uh, there are, there okay. are, and there's some more that we're going to rip out as well. Okay. Um, you know, for example, yeah, 2012 we made Pinotage. That was yeah, we were talking about that. <laughs> um, it was really fun to make. Right. Fun for one time, but not the best bridal. It was nice to visit, but wouldn't want to live there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Exactly. Exactly. Sorry, all uh, you Pinotage lovers. Yeah, I, I just, yeah. you know, I, it, it is a shame that. It is it the, the grape itself or the wines are, are just don't ever seem to get any respect, and and I just I've already discussed with Jeff. I just have not had one I thought was worth the amount of money you were paying for retail. So I'm not saying they were bad wines. I just don't think they were worth the money that you spent on them. Right, and I'm not saying it's a bad rattle either. <laughs> yeah. I'm just weighing Cabernet Sauvignon, Pinot Tau, Right, Cabernet especially Sauvignon. here. What yeah, makes the most sense. Is we bad. talked about how it, it just made more sense here to 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 grow those um, grapes rather than the Pinotage or even the Alicante Bouchette that you had, right? Right, exactly, okay. exactly. So it's just going to be uh, the five main Bordeaux varietals, mm -hmm. uh, mainly Cabernet Sauvignon on the property, and then Merlot, Malbec, Cabernet Franc, and just a little bit of Petit Verdot as well. Okay. So, I mean, it, so it's... lots of different tools and fun things to play around right. with. Uh, like we were talking about before, no set recipe. So yeah. every vintage is just going to be... Uh, the best quality of what we have for that particular year. Let let um, let the vineyards present themselves. Let the vineyards speak. Right. Yeah. Right. Tasting everything blind. It's all driven by palate. Mm -hmm. um, not looking for anything particular, but just the best wine. Cool. Yeah, and I think um, you know, there 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 are wineries that do go by recipe, but others that don't. And just because you have you know eighty percent planted of one varietal doesn't mean that eighty percent has to be that in in the bottle. Right. Yeah. It doesn't have to be. We're trying to dial in the vineyards to where we can use everything and it all mm -hmm. makes sense and everything's performing at you know the optimal level. Right. Um, so that's the end goal for sure, to be right. able to use everything. Um, but if it doesn't make the cut, it doesn't make the cut, we're definitely not going to sacrifice quality for quantity. Cool. It's definitely. And then you've got, you, I got to see the new winery. So kind of talk about that because there's some cool features of that. Yeah, the new winery is awesome. So 2014, first vintage, really, really happy to be in there. Okay. Um, it's super green, gold lead certified. Um, living green roof uh, has all the bells and whistles. Uh, every tank that we had purchased and brought in is specifically designed for how we picked in 2012 and 13. Mm -hmm. So 32 acres planted right now, and we actually made 25 passes throughout the vineyard. So okay. we're really getting detailed. Like I was telling, you, I kind of have a vineyard obsession. Yeah. If we could taste a difference in the vineyard, then I think you can taste a difference in the wine, obviously. And if we can separate that out, um, I think it gives us a better opportunity in the final uh, blending sessions. Right. Ultimately. And you've also got a couple of concrete tanks? A couple of concrete, concrete tanks, yeah. yeah. Exciting new toys. Um, they're just two three-ton concrete tanks, uh, conical. Um, obviously, concrete's been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. Something that I wanted to incorporate and try. I mean, you see it uh, all over France, Bordeaux especially. Right. And, um, so yeah, we're giving it a go. And I like that, the results so far, we'll, we'll see where it takes and us. And is that, that where you got that? Because we talked about you've been over there, so is that where you kind of got the idea to try that? Originally, yes. Okay. Yes. So I've kind of just putting the pieces in, in play and uh, getting the ducks in a row so we can have that for the new winery. Cool. That's kind of the ultimate goal. And then so uh, we'll see. I mean, they're right? young, right? 2014, they've only been in barrel for uh, <laughs> 
not even a couple of weeks, really. Yeah, so, we were listening uh, to the I fermentation. Love, yeah, I love <laughs> the wines right now, and, and right. hopefully I'll love them you know, going down the road as well. Cool. And then you got a pretty cool office, right? Or a lab. Shipping <laughs> containers, right? Yeah. yeah, office lab, break room. Yeah. Uh, three shipping containers uh, that came over from China. And um, they actually, they don't want them back. Want them back, it's easier for them to produce more. And so there's uh, an excess of shipping containers here in the United States. I, I've heard about that. So it's that. a great yeah. way to incorporate those back into different building structures, homes, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of cool stuff that's happening with those. Yeah, I've seen some amazing like pictures of, of, of shipping container homes that just, I, I just blow my mind that people oh, just awesome. do this stuff with it. And you really, there's a way that you can design them to where you still get the shipping container look and feel mm -hmm. if you walk inside, like we walked inside and it looks like a regular yeah. office lab. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, it turned out beautiful. Really and nice. just the size of it too, because you know, it, it, shipping containers, I guess, when you just see a picture of them, they, they, they look, not that they are small, but they look narrow, I guess. Right. And right. when we walked in there, it, you felt like a big, it, it was definitely a big space. Yeah, wide open, right. airy. Uh, lots of light, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel like this tiny little box. I mean, it's very comfortable. We have a chef in uh, San Antonio uh, who opened up a uh, uh, mostly lunch place, but uh, he used shipping containers called the Luxury. Um, and uh, I have yet to eat there, so sorry, Andrew, I haven't been there yet. But um, <laughs> but uh, it's it, I've been by there. Unfortunately, it was the day he, like the day he's closed during the week. It was. It was the only day I went by there, but um, pretty cool, and they've got some cool stuff. But uh, yeah, so I've seen I've seen that in action in a little bit different uh, nice. setting. That's a very cool thing. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, overall, I mean, just the you've got a bunch of stuff going on here, brand new, putting new wines in, putting new vines in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of replanting, new project, which is always fun. Designing the vision, creating the vision, I should say, for the mm -hmm. wines, um, which we did for the inaugural vintage of 2012, which we'll right. taste here coming up. Um, and then also developing the vision for the future as well. Right. Um, lots of new building going on. You know, the brand new winery, which is fun. Farming organically as well. Okay. So we're really trying to be as green as possible all the way through. Cool. Um, like I said, we're not planning on being here for two years, three years, four years, five years. I mean, it's like a 30, 40, 50 year. Right uh, project. So well, I mean, long term. The the Not company itself, but yeah. For the, next generation. the company itself has been around for a while. I mean, they they've got the other properties, and you know, they're they're especially Plump Jack's very well known and well established, uh, well name in in the uh, in the industry. So, right. I mean, it's it's not yeah, it's not a fly by night. Right. right. <laughs> it's it's not somebody who you know some some. Uh, um, trust fund baby or somebody that that you know bond market guy from san francisco decided to come up and buy a winery right, right. <laughs> very cool well let's let's get into some wines here and we're going to have some we're going to have some uh uh other wines uh different labels and then we're going to move into the odette right correct okay. so we have adaptation uh which is our second label okay so working with some of the the best growers in napa valley to really create a wine that speaks to the broader napa valley ADA. okay uh, we're just Odette is specifically um, on the estate that we have here in Stagsley. Okay. So a little bit different of an approach. All right. Um, they're made to be fruit forward, friendly, approachable, straight out the gate. Mm -hmm. So this is 100% Chardonnay. Uh, it's about 90% stainless steel, 10% uh, barrel fermented, and French oak. Okay. Just for that kind of kiss uh, of French oak and complexity and creaminess that you get. So clean, fruit forward, crisp. All right. Um, no malolactic fermentation. So preserving the freshness and, and fruit in the wine. It's a great summertime wine. Right. Um, when the weather is warm outside, this is uh, especially in Texas. Definitely good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, just a question before I get into the wine here. Um, so, this is the third Chardonnay I've had so far um, this week, and nobody's using malolactic. So, is is this becoming a trend? Uh, are the, is everyone trending back to having no malolactic, or is or is it just? I'm just happen to be picking wineries that just aren't doing it. Um, I think that there's a market for both. Uh, the reason why we did not go through malolactic with this particular wine is that we wanted to create something different than uh, Plump Jack, mm -hmm. and then also different from the Odette wine that's going to be coming out. So Plump Jack kind of sits in the middle. That also doesn't go through malolactic fermentation, but it does have um, more barrel fermentation incorporated into the final blend. So okay. it's a little bit fuller body to get a lot of the creaminess and more mid palate. Um, this is kind of on the lower end of the spectrum, uh, more stainless steel. Right. You get a little bit of the creaminess and it still has a nice weight and, and texture in the palate. But then on the totally opposite end, then you get the Odette, which is 100% okay. barrel fermented, 
a huge portion of new oak, uh, French oak, about 75%, full malolactic, okay. uh, aging for 15 plus months in barrel. So it's all about just creating different styles, catering to the marketplace, and then having uh, wines that are not competing against each other, essentially. And there's just, you know, uh, minerality is thrown around a lot with wine, especially with, with white wines. And sometimes it's just a general catch-all for anything that's not fruit or floral. So, I mean, right. it's, it's, it's really, it's almost a misnomer because people say, oh, I get minerality at it. And they really think about like rocks and stone and, and that type of stuff. But I really get that out of this one. Yes. You know, there's, there's that kind of minerality, kind of like, you know, licking a wet rock type of thing, you know, and, and that's, it's refreshing. It really is, you know, and, and it's got really good acid to it. So right. it, it's, it's, it's crisp, it's clean. It's got that, that good minerality. Um, yeah, you, you get the, you know, that citrus, you know, lemony type of citrus out of it, but it's really just, um, really is just like a more, more like the rocks. Right. Yeah. I love that aspect. Yeah. White wines. That's one of my favorite and it does add complexity. It's not mm -hmm. so dominant in this wine, but it's just kind of in the background. It's very subtle. So it adds another layer, another dimension, right? A little bit of complexity, but it's not, not overwhelming by any means. I like this one a lot. Um, and this is to me, one of those wines that you can just drink on its own. Um, you don't, it doesn't scream for food. Um, it will go great with food, but I totally could sit on a porch, drink some oh, of this. Yeah. And, and relax. Um, and white wines tend to be that way more than red anyway. But um, you know, I it's this is not a wine that I, to me feels like I have to have food to make it better. It already is good enough on its own that you can just drink it and enjoy. It. And if you have it with food, then it's going to enhance the food and think you know everything will enhance. But it's 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 just fine on its own. Right. Totally agree. Yeah. You can go either way. Cool. Yeah. Very very nice. I like I like this a lot. And and long term reason the show know that I. Chardonnay and I don't have the best friendships. I'm not saying I hate Chardonnay. I don't. I like it. But I, I tend to sometimes when I go and try to buy wines um, and I don't necessarily know what I'm going to get from, from the Chardonnay, right. I, I buy it and I'm like, okay, am I going to get the buttered popcorn or the style that I don't like or am I going to get something that I like? Because when I – and I no longer give scores to wines, but I at least say I like or I don't like wines. But – you know, I don't want to sit there and on camera um, tell someone on camera that I don't like their wine. <laughs> so, um, it, trust me, if I don't like either one of these, I'll tell you I don't like them. I'm not. <laughs> it's just, just know you won't say. Anything. Yeah, I just I, I won't I won't I won't say that they're the worst wine ever. But uh, if I don't like them, I'll say it, they're not for me. But I have it's hard for me to have wines like that. Most of the time, I like wines. Trust me, it's pretty much I like them. Very Some I like more than others. That's also good. And you don't yeah. know what you're going to get with Chardonnay either. I mean, there's so, yeah. so many different styles and ways to make uh, this particular varietal. So, yeah, without popping open and, and trying, you don't right. really know. I mean, you could have something like this or you could have something totally on the opposite side and they're both not for everybody. Uh, my, my goal with this show is, is, to, is to be the guinea pig for the others out there. So when they look at that bottle of wine, they go, I don't know. They're, they're, they stick with their safe wine. They know it. They always buy it every single time. And people like me, not just me, because I'm not the only one that does this, but people like me, we at least give you that opportunity to figure out from our, our comments whether it's a wine that you might like or not. And so if, if you like this style of wine, which I do like this style of wine, then, then it'll be a good wine. So um, now we talked earlier, before we get too much farther, um, Odette especially has just not had been released yet. Correct. Um, uh, these, uh, they're pretty much club member and winery, or they have some other presence out there in, in retail uh, or restaurant? Not so much yet. Uh, so this is the first uh, first two vintages um, that are actually have been produced here okay. uh, on the estate um, under my direction. And so they're mainly direct to consumer at this point. Right. Um, and then the Odette hasn't even been, been released. released yet. Yeah. Right, right. Cool. All right, yeah, just yeah, to get so that out of the way before we start, you know, getting too far and then have people like going, well, I've never seen that on the shelf. Well, no, you <laughs> <Yeah>. haven't. <laughs> exactly. Again, this is why this is so yeah. cool is, is getting to, to experience this stuff. But, um, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to get that out there because I was pretty sure that we had off camera discussed it. These, even these are still kind of direct to consumer. Correct. Correct. Okay. And, and just, just releasing here actually. Too. Right. Right. Cool. Well, this is, this is very nice starting I like it a Thank lot. You. So we're going to move on to the cab. 
Is this yeah, This is the 2012 adaptation of mm -hmm. Happy Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay. So this is 78% Cabernet Sauvignon and 22% Merlot. All right. And like I said before, we're really working with local growers to try to produce and uh, create a wine that really showcases the broader uh, Napa Valley ABA. Okay. That's the main goal. And produce it in a style that still has complexity, but a lot of fruit. Um, something that's a little bit more approachable from day one. Okay. Um, something that you don't have to sell her and put away for 10, 15, 20 years. Right. Um, I mean, this is something that you can take home on a Tuesday night. Uh, and drink it Tuesday Friday, night. Friday, Saturday night. Yeah, and drink it Tuesday night. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's, it's ready to go. But it's still, if you wanted to lay it down for five, 10 years, I think you could do that as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, and, and yeah, not every wine needs to be, you know, this super serious wine that you have to you have to sell it for forty years. I mean, wine is meant to be drunk. It's meant to be enjoyed. It's, it's you know, it, it's it, how what we're doing here is probably not what wine is meant to be anyway. You're not supposed to be, you know, it's not meant to be like analyzed and, and dissected necessarily, but it's meant to be enjoyed with with people. So right, exactly. It's all about the enjoyment. I get some nice fruit with this. I mean, some really nice dark fruits, um, uh, dark red and, and black fruits with it, right. um, but not over the top. It's not, it's not really in my face with huge tannin. Um, it's really nice and smooth. This is again because it's not hugely tannic. This is a wine I really could just kind of just chill and and you know we got the music, chill music going on. I could chill with this. You know, hang out and, and, and just drink. I could just totally drink this straight and not have any food with it and be perfectly happy. Right. I think you could go either way on this one as well. Yeah. Yeah, and the whole goal. I mean, there's enough structure and, and the tannin is there and it's present, but it's mm -hmm. very well integrated into the wine. So it makes it smooth, soft, silky. Right. Um, ready for the Tuesday night. Yeah, and... it. And, and again, you're right. You know, there's, there's, there are Tuesday night wines, and there are special occasion wines, right. and there's stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with Tuesday night wines. I mean, some of the some of the most fun that people have are are with those types of wines that right. are just meant to be table wines, have a good time, have fun, and and not take life too seriously. Right. You know. Right. And this is this is definitely one of those. And, and, it's, and it's not that you couldn't use this on a more special night. You could. It's, mm -hmm. No. No doubt this could be, you know, this could be your special wine. You know, this is that you're gonna bring out. Without a doubt. Uh, just in the comparison of the lineup and the wines that we created here mm -hmm. for the entire portfolio, when you think about the progression, you think about the Odette, Estate Company, something on the Odette Reserve being the super special occasion wines. Mm -hmm. So to try to create something that's a little bit more approachable, just to fit into our portfolio uh, was the main goal. Yeah, so whether it's Tuesday night, whether it's still Valentine's Day or an anniversary, I think you <laughs> right. can still do that too. Yeah, and, and you know, also on the nose, I mean, it's it's just very pleasant on the nose and I get like a little bit of cocoa powder to yes, it, you know? absolutely. You know, yeah. and, and over the years I've I've been able to kind of maybe differentiate between just chocolate mm -hmm. and then kind of what kind of chocolate. The, yeah, the yeah so to me it's like cocoa powder. It's almost like, it's almost like, you know, popping open the big thing in Nestle Quick chocolate milk mix and just... You know, smelling that, you know, right. that type of thing, which I love chocolate milk, by the way. So, um, <laughs> you know, when, when I when I go when I go out and uh, when it's breakfast time, um, I I don't drink coffee at all. Which I know, like wine, big wine people, they love coffee and they and they equate coffee with a lot of stuff. And I'm like, I don't like coffee, but hot chocolate, I'm all, all day, about, I'm, all day. All right. Even Starbucks hot chocolate, I'll, I'll suffer through. It's not the best hot chocolate. I've had much better. I've I've grown to I've grown to like it now, but the first time I ever had it, I thought it was horrible. I thought I could make better hot chocolate, but <laughs> but anything hot chocolate, I love. I love that. That's my, that's my breakfast drink. Hell, I'll do it at night after, after after work. I'll just do that too. <laughs> Very nice. Next wine? Next wine. So this is, this is the, now we're getting to the even cooler stuff. Yeah, definitely. So this is the 2012 Odette Estate Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay. So 100% estate. Uh, this is the first vintage, inaugural vintage off the property here. Uh, really excited um, about this wine and the wines that are coming down the pipeline. So this is 75% uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, 14% Merlot, and 11% Cabernet Franc. Okay. Uh, aged in 75% New French Oak for uh, about 20 months. Okay. So I think it uh, really captures the potential off this property, uh, the true essence of uh, this unique property and the terroir of, of Stag City. Okay. And to go real back, back real quick to, to the adaptation, I kept, kept meaning to ask the question and got sidetracked. 
that these wines will still continue to be sourced or is this eventually going to be a state wine? No, they will never be a state wine. Okay. Yeah, they will always be sourced. Um, really trying to keep Odette basically focused on the estate. So, okay. So it'll be 100% estate. And that'll just be Odette and an adaptation will always be from local growers. Okay. This is tasty. <laughs> I mean, this is it's it's good. Um, and and the tannin really started sneaking up on me because at first I was like, I don't really feel a lot of tannin on this. Mm -hmm. You know, it felt really light. And then and then after I let it sit in my mouth a little bit and spit it out, I was like, now I feel it. Yeah. Now I feel it. And, it, right. and again, it's not hugely in your face. Um, this definitely to me really should have food with it. You could if you really wanted to have it by itself. Mm -hmm. um, it's something you know. Nothing wrong with drinking it on its own, but I, I really think that you definitely would be, it would be better for the wine and better for yourself to, to have food with it. Um, it's a good wine, um, but you definitely, I think, would, would um, want to have some food with this and really enhance the experience with, with the wine. I could go either way, but yeah. uh, it has great acidity, mm -hmm. so I think that doesn't make for a great food wine. Um, but yeah, I think it has lots of body complexity. Um, some great floral notes, so there's a pretty side and elegance to it, um, but also good good weight. Lots yeah, of definitely, definitely got some good weight on that. I, I get the floral, and just you know the 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 nose is the nose is to me a little more restrained than, than the adaptation, um, but I get the floral out of it. I get I get some of that red fruit. Um, I mean, we've had these wines poured for we're about maybe forty five minutes. Yeah, because we were that. about half hour into this, and they reported about fifteen minutes prior. Right. So they've they've had time to, to kind of open up, but you know, I, I would think that given more time, um, this would open up even more. Yeah, you know, over a couple hour period. Right. Yeah. That's why it's not released yet. Also. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it's young, it's still young, young right? Young, yeah. Young and, and that's that's where I'm looking at this as there's there's potential in this wine. This is not I want to say it's not a finished wine, but it's it's still it's still developing. For, for release. Right. Um, and you're playing what, I think, a February? It's February of 2015. So yeah. we still got a little bit of time. Yeah, so we'll just continue to get better and better. Yeah. Open up more. You know, and this is this is the cool part, is being able to try a wine that's still um, pre-release, basically. Yeah. You know? Yes. And, and and a lot of times, like, you know, these these major wine reviewers, that's how they get their wines anyway. They're, they're getting that, they're getting a sample bottle that probably is a pre-release. Or, or if it's like a a bottle that's intended to be drunk like 10 years from now, they still have to evaluate it, not as how it is now, but how it's going to be. Absolutely. And that, I don't know how they do that. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you guys do that. I mean, I, I mean, I, I try to, you know, analyze the structure of the wine, you know, it has its tannins, how is this acid, that kind of stuff. And, and I can, I do sometimes make my general judgments that this wine is a wine that could last X number of years. But right. man, I don't know how these guys do that on a regular basis, but this is, Tasting a lot. Yeah. Well, sure. and, that's, and that's how you learn how to identify all this stuff anyway, is just tasting a lot. My father will tell you, he doesn't taste and smell the stuff that you and I taste in, in these wines. He, he'll just tell you if he likes it or not, you know? At the end of the day, that's all that matters. Like, e even, in, even in the glass, the consumer. even in the glass and having swirled it, I mean, there's, there's development in here already. Um, I, mean, I actually get more of the chocolate now. And over time, even the palate is developing, and you know, with with, with swirling the wine, that's really aerating it, getting a little more air, and it's developing it. And this is what I love about when I when I do these wines um, is that I'll pour wine, I'll start talking about it, and then I almost always go back to it later on during the during the show just to see if something see else has happened. There's right. you know, most of the time progression does happen, sometimes it doesn't. And then after I'm done with it, if I sit down, and I drink the wine off camera. Two, three, four hours later, you it's know, totally it's, again. yeah, it, it is totally different. And sometimes, if I didn't give a raving review of a wine necessarily, uh, it'll it'll all of a sudden be like, man, it's really great. Other times, I've given a really good review of the wine; it stays that way. Maybe it dropped off a little bit, but 
you know, it just it changes. And this wine is already changing in front of us. Um, even though it's sat here for a while, the, the agitation of it and us interacting with it like that, I think, and, and also getting more onto the palate, you know, it does, just one tasting doesn't tell you everything in a wine. You've got you to continue to taste the glass. Um, I, I've always found that my first taste isn't always the best analysis of the wine. It usually takes me a second and third taste to really get all the complexities of, of a glass. Right. Yeah, I would agree with that. And they keep changing, and to see the full wine's potential, I think you have to kind of sit on it and follow it through for a mm -hmm. certain period of time. This is excellent. I cannot wait for this to come out in a few more months, so, and, and to try it again and see see what's happened with the wine in bottle and to, um, to experience it. So have these already been, are these all bottled or is this just like a sample bottle? Oh no, these are all bottled. They're all bottled, so they're all, just waiting for a bottled. release. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and it's, it's mainly just, uh, so the two adaptation wines um, have been bottled, if that bottle age, uh, they're ready to, to be released and have been released and they're here in the tasting room. Right. It's just the idea to state that we're waiting on and we want to find that sweet spot and uh, right. I really think February is going to be that, okay. that moment in time where it's going to showcase and um, or be showcased to the full potential and, and really kind of come out. That's so. something to remember that that's what, you know, wineries hold these bottles for that because they might be ready for bottle. I mean, you may, you may have, my guess is once you're done in the barrel, either, either barrel's already done everything it's going to do or you don't want it to do anymore, right? Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, pulling it out at the right time to, to capture, um, you know, the perfect performance of what you've been tasting that entire time. Um, you want to get the elegance, you want to get the structure, you want to get some of the complexities from the barrel, but mm -hmm. you also don't want to dry out the wine. Right. So every wine's going to react a little bit differently. Um, adaptation, you know, that was aged for a little bit less time than the Odette. Right. The Odette has a little bit more body and structure, so we can go a little bit longer for that. Right. Um, but every, every wine is different, and then you have the bottle age on top of that. Mm -hmm. So it's all these steps that kind of play in and um, try to capture it at the best moment. Very nice. Um, you know, all these wines are all these wines are excellent. Um, you know, they, they definitely fit different different um, roles. I guess is the way to put it. Yes. Um, that's a good way to put it. But um, you know, these wines definitely are you know good for that everyday drinking, drinking by himself, drinking with friends, drinking with food, whatever. Um, the Odette, you know, Odette, I could drink it on its own, absolutely. <laughs> but I probably would prefer to have food with it but you know I, I, there's there's many times that all i want is some wine and that's all i'm gonna have and maybe sure. it is the bigger bolder wine that i'm gonna drink because that's what i want maybe maybe i just had a particularly rough day at work and i need something to i i, I want big and bold still or maybe i want something light and refreshing instead but right. you know right. um it's it's excellent i mean this i'm blown away by all the wines i mean i'm having a little more of this because i, I i'm just enjoying the fact that it keeps developing Very nice. Um, one last question. I, I, I don't ask everybody, um, at least I haven't asked everybody up here, but my feeling is pretty much up here, the earthquake didn't really do as much as farther south because it was an American canyon. Uh, different parts got hit. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely harder than others. We were really fortunate at the three right. wineries. Um, we didn't have any damage here whatsoever. Right. So if we're really blessed. Um, other places, not so fortunate. Right. For sure. I'm sure you've seen some pictures and oh, yeah. unfortunate. Like, like th happened. that morning, you know, because oh, yeah. since it happened so early in the morning and I happened to be awake, I already started seeing the pictures, you know, showing up. So, right. um, yeah, lots of uh, barrels that unfortunately came down, poor right. things tipped over, structural damage. Um, we didn't have any of that, so we feel blessed. Yeah, and it, it seems like north of Napa itself, it was pretty much, it was pretty much like that. For, for most yeah, of the wineries? It, came, it kind of ran up. So, yeah, American Canyon, um, you know, Browns Valley, the west side of Napa, kind mm -hmm. of running all the way up the mountain range there. Uh, yeah. Got hit a little bit a little bit harder. Right, yeah. Uh, as I found out afterwards, there's three active fault lines now. Oh, wow. Before, so <laughs> it's a little bit of a wake-up call. No, all, but, all I can say is, um, not that I would ever hope for any other time, but I definitely don't hope while I'm here. <laughs> I have never experienced an earthquake, and I'm not, I'm not in any way wanting to experience an earthquake. I guarantee you, if I ever do, I I don't know. 
I mean, I'll be happy I survived one. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm happy that it happened when it did. Because yeah, I think if it happened during time, the day, right? it could have been a lot worse. And uh, we should also portion. Yeah, especially with all the barrels falling down exactly. from the racks. Yeah, exactly. That was, I think, the biggest takeaway with 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 it from reading all the news articles is because of the time of day it happened. Um, while there was a lot of damage, there wasn't any, there wasn't any life. You right, know, life that's loss, the most so. important thing. Right? Yeah, wine can be replaced, barrels can be replaced, but people yeah, can't. exactly. Well, uh, Jeff, I really appreciate you spending time with me, going out to the vineyards, um, the winery and all that, and, and spend some time with me this morning. Because um, even though harvest is over, there's still a lot of work to get done. Oh, yeah. You know, fermentation time does require, you know, constant monitoring. So um, I appreciate uh, you and everybody else in Napa for spending time with me. And um, I look forward to seeing these wines on release and um, uh, coming back again in the future. Sounds great. All right. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Folks, uh, just again, as always, thank you for stopping by. Um, Hit the links above to affirm me up. Uh, There'll be a link below here for Odette so you can find out how to uh, uh, get the wines direct um, when this is released and how to get these direct. Um, And then uh, I'm not pointing at Jeff, but hit the button over here. Uh, You can send a few ducats my way. And um, we'll see everyone again next time.